In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to recreate the Squid Game animation intro using just PowerPoint. Now, if you're wondering what in the world is Squid Games, then I don't know where you've been all this while, but Squid Games is Netflix's biggest series yet and the new internet sensation. If you haven't seen it, I want to skip it up and just look for a quick wrap. Uh, Mr. Beast has a 25 minute video he did on this. I'll advise you to watch that. I'm going to put a link to that in the description. You can check it out. You're welcome. All right, so now to the intro. Whether you like Squid Game or not, we have to admit this intro was really beautifully done. So it starts with the symbol of the Squid Game itself, and then that transforms and transitions into the word Squid Game in Korean. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, and I'm gonna show you exactly the way I did it, and I'm gonna also teach you how to do it yourself. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need is a screen capture of the intro itself. Now, Netflix is not gonna let you do a screen capture, so you might have to use your phone or just do a screen grab from this video that you're watching right now since I already have it for you. All right, once you have that, we're gonna head over to PowerPoint, um, insert the very first frame and the very last frame as our background on two slides. And to do that, simply just right click, click on Format Background, then go to Insert and then say Picture from file and just select the pictures wherever you've saved them on your computer. All right, now that you have that loaded up, what we wanna do next is actually build out these symbols using PowerPoint. We're gonna start with the circle shape and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you wanna to head to insert and then click on shapes and then click on this little donut looking shape and then just draw a circle and adjust it to fit uh, with your reference image in the background. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is change the color by clicking on shape fill and just selecting the white color to match. And then once you're done with that, you just wanna duplicate this circle by pressing Ctrl C or Command C and then drag it and put it at the bottom. So we now have two circles. All right, so far that was easy peasy. So let's move on to do the triangle shape. All right, so you wanna head back to shapes, but this time around select the triangle shape and draw a rough triangle about the size of your reference triangle. Then we're going to head to shape fill and select no fill and then go to shape outline and select the white color for the outline and then go back to shape outline, go to weight, click more lines and then right here where it says weight, just put a point of about 15 points and then just resize your triangle to fit and match the reference triangle at the back. All right, finally for your square, because of the way its animation is gonna transition, we're going to use four different lines to draw it. So I'm using the rectangle shape and drawing four different uh, rectangles to match the square at the back and just changing the colors to white. So I'm gonna do this for all the four corners and this will become more clear later on when we start animating. Congratulations, you're now fully done with all the squid symbols. Now you can go ahead and change your background from an image to a black solid. All this Squid Game talk has got me hungry for a cookie. So let me go ahead and get this stuff out. Uh, ooh, nice. All right, let's move on. Now that we have all our shapes built out, the next thing we wanna do is start animating it. And this is the fun part. So we're gonna be starting off with our circle. If we look at our reference video, you see that this circle morphs and then transitions and forms a smaller circle. So we're gonna start with this animation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy the last frame of the intro and paste it here in my slide and then just right click and send it to the back. It's gonna serve as a reference throughout as we animate all these symbols. When working on animations like this, it's very helpful to have your guidelines turned on. So if you don't have them turned on, simply just head over to view and just check on the ruler, guides, and then guidelines. That simple. All right. First, I'm gonna copy one of the lines from the square and paste it right here on the top and just resize it. This is gonna be the line that our circle morphs into. Then I'm also gonna copy the shorter side and move it right here. And then this is gonna be where our circle comes down to morph into the smaller circle. So with my bigger circle selected, I'm gonna come here to animations and then go to exit animation and select on the wheels. So as you can see, it exits out with a wheel. Next, I'm gonna click on the first rectangle and click on a wipe entrance animation. And then I'm gonna go to effect options and select from the left. So it wipes in from the left. Then finally, I'm gonna make this start with previous and then also change the duration to two minutes. And that looks something like this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add one more animation to our rectangle and it's gonna be an exit animation and it's still gonna wipe, but also wipe from the left. So I'm just gonna change the effect option to from the left. So I'm also gonna go ahead and add an entrance animation to the bottom line. It's gonna be a wipe animation, but this time around, it's gonna be from the top. Then I'm gonna make it start with previous. We're still gonna come back to actually adjust all our animation timing later on, but right now we just need this for a guide. Finally, I'm gonna add an exit animation to this line, and then I'm gonna duplicate uh, the larger circle 
make sure to delete its own exit animation and then just resize it and scale it to match the circle that we have right here in the bottom. And lastly, I'm just going to add the wheels entrance animation to the bottom circle. And our final animation should now look something like this. It morphs and then morphs back into the smaller circle. Beautiful. I then replicated this exact same process for the bottom circle next to the square and giving it all the same animations like we just did with the one on the top. So if you notice Hi, something, there is a limitation with the wheels animation and that is that the animation always starts and ends at the top of the shape and there's no way within PowerPoint to change where this ends. Hopefully this is something that the PowerPoint team is going to add at a later version of PowerPoint because this is going to be very very helpful when doing animations like this. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenge for our bottom circle because we actually want that loop to end at the bottom and not at the top the way it's doing right now. Luckily there's a trick we can use to walk around this limitation. So the trick here is to add one more animation to the shape. So if you click on the circle and go to add animation, we're going to click on the spin animation on the emphasis, double click on it and select half spin and then click on OK. Now, if you play this back, our wheels animation is going to end right here at the bottom beautifully and it can transition into the next shape. For the rest of the lines, we're going to just do the same wipe animations like we did at the top. Nothing changes there, but for the top circle too, don't forget to also add the same spin. So before we're done with this, we'll do one more thing. On the original intro, the circle right here also turns into red. So we're going to go ahead and add that animation effect to change it to red. To do that, we're going to go to add animation and then click on fill color and then change the color to red right here. And then just make sure to start it with previous. And when you play it back, it's going to look something like this. All right. If you enjoyed this video so far, I'll appreciate a thumbs up. And I also welcome you to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Now, before we proceed, because we have so many shapes that are going to be in this one slide, it might make sense to name them so it doesn't get very confusing. And to do that, you simply go to the Home tab and then click on Select and then click on Select Pane. And then right here, if you click on any shape, you're going to see it to the right and you can just double click on that and name it and give it whatever name you want it to have. So I'm going to go ahead and name all my shapes that I have here to make it easy for me to do the animations as we go along. Next thing we're going to do is animate the box. And if you look at the original uh, intro, the box transforms into a smaller box and changes color to red. So we're going to do that animation right now. So we can do all of that animation in this same slide. But to keep your sanity, I would advise that you cut all of this. Just select all the four boxes, cut them and paste them in a new slide. We're going to do our animation in that new slide. And once we're done, we'll bring it back in here just to keep things easy to understand. We're just going to follow each of the lines and replicate the animation. So if you look at the top line, it morphs and forms the right part of the smaller box. So let's do that right now. So I'm just going to click on the shape and go to animation and add a motion path. And I'll choose the left to right motion path and then also adjust my anchor point to make sure that it ends just about where the side of the smaller box is going to be starting. And then give it a wipe exit animation like we've done before so that it exits out once it's gone all the way to the end. All right, next I'm just going to copy one of the sides of the bigger square and move it to the side of the smaller square and just adjust it to fit in. So this will be forming the right side of my smaller square. So to match the animation of the original intro, I'm going to use the split entrance animation. And then on that effect option, I'm going to change it to horizontal out. Now, if we look at the bottom line, it also morphs, but this time around, it forms the left side of the smaller box. So we're going to go ahead and repeat the exact same thing and create the animation for that also. But this time around, we're just going to do something slightly different is that we're going to make the line that goes up slightly shorter and I'm adding a motion path that makes it moves all the way to the top. So we're just going to go ahead and repeat the exact same thing for the left and the right lines using the intro animation as a reference to how these lines morph. And once you're done with that, your animation should look something like this. Now there's one more thing. The smaller box also changes to red. And now I just use the exact same process I did for the circle to change the color to red. So once you're done with all of this, just copy all of the shapes and then paste them on your original PowerPoint slide. And now if we play this from the top, it should look something like this. At this point, we can go ahead and adjust our timeline to fit 
properly with the animation speed. And if you do not have this advanced timeline, it's very easy to enable it. Just right click on any animation and click on show advanced timeline. And this would let you drag each of the animations to start at a very particular point in the slide. If you've made it this far, congratulations. Now we just have to do the animation for the triangle and the rest of it is a breeze. So I'm gonna copy out that triangle and paste it on a new PowerPoint presentation. And I'm gonna explain why in a second. And then I'm gonna draw a shape at the bottom of it. Make it white and then right click to edit the point and edit the shape to fit the form of the bottom of the triangle. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this slide, just right click and duplicate. And then on my second slide, I'll reduce this triangle size to be very small to the corner of our line. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on transition and click on the morph transition. And that looks like this. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this slide and then move the triangle to the left and then also reduce the size of the line so it fits into the triangle. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and put the morph transition and then it goes just like that. So now we're gonna export this as a video and import it into our other PowerPoint slide. Before we do, if we look at our original triangle shape right here, there's a little line behind the triangle. We're gonna add that line before we do the export. And to do that, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle shape, make it white, and then delete the reference and just move it behind the triangle and send it to the back. Now I'm also going to copy it and paste it on our slide number two, move it to the left, reduce its size a little bit, and then change its color to black. Now if we do our morph transition, it should come in like this. To export your video, simply head on to files, click on export, and then click on create video, and then you can create the video and give this a name. So to import this back into PowerPoint, simply just go to insert, click on video and from this device and select your exported video. Now right click and send it to the back and then drag its animation to the top and just make it play with previous. Now if we play all of this from the top, it should look something like this. Congratulations, with this you're done with the most difficult part of this animation and you have the full first part of the intro done. The next is going to be super, super quick and super easy. To finish this up, simply paste the last frame of the intro on a new slide and use the rectangle tool to draw out all the shapes. And then from here on, it's just a simple wipe animation to bring them all in. When it comes to the seven looking like symbol, uh, you have to right click again and edit point. And then now you can sort of morph it around to fit the number seven. Also on the original one, they added a drop shadow to this. So once you're done with that, simply go up to shape, click on shape effect, and then you have right here shadows and just select the shadow effect. And then one last thing is that for the circles that are here, we're going to use the zoom animation instead of the wipe because this is how they did it in the original one. And with this, you're done. You simply copy all this shape and then go back to your original slide and paste them back in and you're done with your Squid Game intro. And if you play it all back, it should look like this. All right, that's it. That was how I recreated the Squid Game animation intro using just PowerPoint. If you enjoyed this video once again, I welcome you to give it a thumbs up. That helps me along with growing the channel. And I welcome you to subscribe to see more tutorials like this one and many more. I'll catch you in the next video. Keep learning. Bye-bye.